عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير ثم أما بعد والحمد لله Respected brothers and sisters, welcome to another lesson of Hadith lessons, lessons from Riyadh. Um, another lesson of Fiqh of Marriage, Alhamdulillah. Thursday is Fiqh of Marriage, Monday is Hadith lessons from Riyadh al And today, inshallah, we continue with lesson number 10. Last lesson last week, last Thursday was lesson number 9. Um, in our last discussion, we spoke about a few different topics. Um, if you want to refer to it, then inshallah you can find it If you backtrack on the YouTube and on the Facebook pages Inshallah We were talking about the whole concept Okay Of uh, guardianship and supervision and parent permission when it comes to marriage And when it comes to the wilaya and the guardianship of the female spouse or the bride And there's a mas'ala which is a very Intensely debated and strongly disagreed upon between the Jamhur of the Fuqaha and the Hanafi school of law, whereby the Jamharatul Fuqaha and the majority of them say that for a woman to have her Aqdul Nikah, she must have her Wali, her legal guardian's permission, and he or he must be present and he must be. Uh, okay with the marriage whereas the Ahnaf have said something quite dissimilar something quite different and that's discussed in some detail in our previous lesson and so for some clarity we can refer to that inshallah we now come to the next topic which is the types of guardianship the types of guardianship when it comes to the bride um, what kind of guardianship uh, what are the two types of guardianship uh, that they may exist Number one is called Wilayatul Ijbar okay? And this is uh, not just uh, in the case of the bride It can be in the case of the bridegroom also And uh, Wilayatul Ijbar is basically where the decision uh, of, uh, In terms of uh, the marriage contract Is primarily focused upon the guardian And then there's the second type Which is called Wilayatul Ikhtiyar or Wilayatul Sharika, which is where the decision is led by the guardian, but the contribution of the bride is required, that she must make the choice and she must be okay with it. Uh, in terms of the difference between the two, I mean, it's not a really important topic, but since it's come up in the book, we'll just quickly mention it. That al wilayat al lati anfaridu biha al waliyu duna an yashtarika ghayr, which is the Wilayatul Ijbar, that he is the guardian, would be himself sort of more in control or completely in control and this would be in the case of where the person who's getting married has got any mental deficiencies mentally unstable um, or uh, hasn't fully come to an age of understanding um, and so on in similar kind of circumstances where the the person who's getting married is not fully capable of making the decision themselves here it is absolutely required that the guardian um, is present and guides that decision. When it comes to wilayatul um, ikhtiyar, uh, then and there is a difference between the fuqaha as to who is considered to be uh, eligible for wilayatul ijbar, and then we have the second type, which is wilayatul ikhtiyar, whereby the guardian's contribution is required, uh, but it is not the primary driving factor in the aqdul nikah, um, and this is considered to be uh, this is for uh, the woman who is you know fully uh, mature baligha aqila can make her own choices here her agreement and also of course the bridegroom's agreement is absolutely required and that is the ultimate driving factor uh, and the and the contributing factor in the aqdun nikah because ijab and qabul proposition and acceptance and rida and you know um, uh, 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 happiness and sort of con- uh, contentment and consent in the nikah is required for the aqdun nikah to be valid um, and so that's called wilayatul ikhtar meaning there is a choice and the guardian is also there to guide to support and to aid now when it comes to a woman who is fully capable of making her own decisions then as the prophet sallallahu has taught us qala uh, athayyibu ahannu bi nafsiha min waliyha wal bikru wal bikru yastamiruha abuha 
fi nafsiha. That when it's when it comes to a woman that's previously been married, you know, then she is fully aware and she is more understanding of her own situation and her choices. And when it comes to a woman who's not been married yet, then her father should seek her permission and ask her ask her opinion uh, before any sort of wedding discussions uh, proceed. Uh, and uh, and so this is this is considered to be uh, one of the uh, uh, you know this is this is one of the very important aspects of the marriage that the that the guardian and the children the guardians and the children are involved in the decision making when it comes to the ahqatun nikah it is also from the sunnah that the the wife's or the bride's mother is also um questioned and her permission and her opinion is also taken uh, and as the prophet sallam said amirun nisaa fi banatihin that speak to your women regarding uh, regarding their daughters as in speak to the mothers of the brides to have their opinion also on board when it comes to aqdun nikah so this is very beautiful where you know the father the mother uh, as well as the bride um, are together you know making a choice um, uh, making a decision and doing the right thing and making a calculated uh, calculated uh, step forward when it comes to aqdun nikah and that's how it should be now we come to the next discussion, which is shurutul wali. In terms of the guardian, who is the who is the? And now, when we say guardian, of course, a guardian can be a guardian. You know, you, we can, it's, it's quite a loose term. A parent can be a guardian. Someone else can also be assigned as a guardian. But when I say guardian in in nikah contract, I'm talking about the person who is going to be the legal guardian of the bride. In that nikah, the wali, the technical meaning of wali, you know, wali of course, the, the word wilaya, you know, inna ma wali Allah wa rasulu, and you know, the wali has a, got very various different meanings. Uh, it could be friend, it could be a close person, but here we're talking about guardianship, who will take the official position of wali, guardian in the marital contract, and this refers to the wali and the guardian of the bride, as in the female spouse, of course. Now, we've said. That a wali is required for a bride, and a wali is also required, and is, you know the parents of the, the the bridegroom should also be consulted, and he should. This is from Min Bab Birul Walidain. They should be consulted, and he should act in their agreement and think about, take their considerations into account when choosing his wife and etc. But here, technically, we're speaking in terms of the marriage contract itself, Shurutul Wali, the conditions of the legal guardian. What are the conditions that must be met? by this legal guardian when it comes to Aqdun Nikah as in the legal guardian of the bride. The first condition, there are some seven conditions which must be met by the uh, wali and the legal guardian uh, who will be technically recorded in the marriage contract. Uh, is first of all, he should be a Muslim. And a wali, okay, a wali, the guardian of the bride, the legal guardian, must be a Muslim. And therefore, uh, and this is because Allah has various adillah in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah, وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا And so on. Uh, and so it is very important. The first of the conditions of the wali and the guardian for the bride in the nikah is that he must be Muslim. Second condition in the uh, for the wali in aqdun nikah after being a Muslim is that this uh, wali must be baligh. Meaning of age of puberty at least, and this is هذا باتفاق الفقهاء إلا رواية رواية ذكرها صاحب المغني الإمام أحمد بن الصبي إذا بلغ there are there is one difference of opinion, but nonetheless the جمهرة الفقهاء and all of them you can say except for one uh, رواية which is mentioned in مغني uh, that the wali must be بالغ بالغ زين of an age of puberty. The third condition. For the legal guardian of the bride in Aqdun Nikah is that he must be intellectually stable and intellectually understanding and make able to make the right decision, which is Al Aql. Al Aql. Fourth condition is that the wali must be Hur and he must not be a uh, uh, he must not be a slave person in the ta- in, in 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 the of course this is in the context of in the, the historical context where uh, slavery was a widespread phenomenon. But now, of course, this may this is not applicable uh, because everyone is uh, we can say everyone is 
uh, is free and their slavery has been abolished, alhamdulillah. So therefore, al hurriya is also considered to be a condition, technically speaking. Uh, fifth condition for the fifth condition for we're talking about the conditions that must be met by the wali, legal guardian of the bride in a marriage contract. Fifth condition is that he must be a male, and must be a, a a man, basically a male, a male. فلا فلا تثبت ولا ولا المرأة that her guardian cannot be a woman. And this is again, look, we've spoken about this before. There's no, this is in terms of explaining the hikmah, etc. That's a whole different separate discussion. If we have to explain the hikmah every time, then we'll get stuck and we'll not be able to proceed with the understanding the laws of it. Uh, this is the law and this is the divine guidance sent to Allah by Allah Azawajal. and we, we can discuss the hikmah of it and the wisdom of it etc but so uh, the fifth condition is that the male uh, the, the guardian must be a male uh, uh, sixth condition is that he must be able to make the right kind of decision he has decision he has he, has, he must have a rushd okay as mentioned in the Quran in different countries but rushd means to be able to make make the right decision for themselves and for others also and the seventh condition is al adala al adala that they must be a fair person fair, fair person fair person sorry fair person and a and an upright person okay uh, okay uh, this is uh, however differed upon between the schools of law uh, for example ذهب الشافعية في قول والحنابلة في رواية that adala and being upright is a condition in the wali uh, and 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 uh, this is because the Prophet said, "Lanik ah illa bi wali yum wa shahidi adil." That they must be uh, adil, they must be upright. Uh, however, the second opinion of the Shafi'iyya and the riwaya, uh, the second riwaya from the Hanabila, is that, uh, uh, and also the opinion of the Maliki school of law is that the adala and the being upright is not a condition per se in the case of uh, the legal guardian of the bride. Meaning, even if even if the wali and the guardian of the bride seems to be, you know, seems to be a, a sinful person. He's not upright. He's not praying, or etc. Then he is still technically has the right to be the guardian of his daughter or his granddaughter, and so on and so forth. As you'll understand, the order of the list of uh, legal guardianship when it comes to aqd and nikah. Let's revise this quickly once again. And there is one more, which is that uh, thaminan some fuqaha have added a ru'ya. Okay. And in fact, there is also an additional, uh, uh, an additional uh, uh, ninth one which some fuqaha have added. So some have said that the wali, uh, the legal guardian of the bride, should be able to see so that he can identify who the who the bridegroom is and to do his to be able to make a decision, or to be able to sort of uh, guide the right decision to to make the research. You know, for him to be able to see would be a great help in that regard, as well as and this is again differed upon between the fuqaha. And then also some scholars have said that the uh, the legal guardian of the bride should be able to also pronounce and speak, basically. They should be able to speak and not be unable to uh, 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 speak. So this is uh, all. This, this, this is the conditions. Some of them are, like we've said, are differed upon and not all folk have agreed upon them. But as for the ones that have been agreed without any doubt whatsoever between the fuqaha and the jurists in terms of the conditions that must be met by the legal guardian of the bride is that he must be a Muslim, he must be baligh, he must be aqil. Uh, baligh means, you know, age of puberty, aqil, mentally stable, he must be a horror, of course, uh, must be a man and must be able to make the right kind of decisions. We can see five conditions are taken for granted when it comes to the legal guardian of the bride in a marriage contract. And we've, like, we've spoken about this last lesson again. You can go back to it again. In the case of where the woman, where the bride does not have, does not have or cannot get their, uh, their legal guardian uh, to the nikah discussion table, whether it be because uh, she doesn't have one, you know, it can be someone who's a sole survivor in the family, for example, um, uh, or because that uh, she is a convert or a revert, sorry, and everyone else is in her family is not a Muslim, then what do you do in that situation? There are a few solutions. If you, if, if you want to take the, uh, the, the opinion of the Hanafi school of law, then we can simply say that because she is 
um, she she is of an age of understanding and she can make her own decisions. You know, she if she can indeed make her own decisions and if she's capable of making her own decisions, then she has a right to do so and therefore she can get married without a uh, uh, technically or without a legal wali. And this is a, a well-known Hanafi opinion and there's no doubt about it. It's recorded in the Fatawa books. You can find Ibn Abdeen, you can find it in, uh, in even some of the modern fatwa books, even in the Urdu language. Um, it's also mentioned in various, you know, uh, all the reliable books of uh, Hanafi uh, fiqh jurisprudence. You can find that in. So if it's the case of, uh, like, uh, if it's the case of a revert sister, then she has an option. She can say that, you know, I, I because I can make my own decision and I have done my research and done my studies, uh, looked into what I need to look into, you know, asked the right kind of, people for references I think I can in the I can make a decision for myself then she is allowed to according to the Hanafi opinion. The second way or another way you can not, not to say first or second or you know the another way which is according to the Jamhur of the Fuqaha is that someone from the Muslim community would become her technical wali, even though they're not related, but technically and for the sake of the marriage contract would become her wali and that person could be someone who's reliable in the community, someone who's trustworthy, like the Imam of the Masjid or like, you know, a alim in the community, or just someone who's reliable in the community, as long as they meet the conditions of wilaya, which is Islam, uh, Muslim, baligh, you know, uh, aqil, uh, uh, male, and rushd, to be able to make the right kind of decision and to guide the right kind of decisions. Um, next topic is also very, very important, which is now we've spoken about the whole, you know, is a wali required or not? That We've spoken about that. Then we've spoken about the different types of wilaya, the wilayatul ijbar and wilayatul ikhtiyar. We've spoken about that briefly today. The conditions that must be requ- met by the, the wali. What are the conditions that are required in a uh, legal guardian in a marriage contract for the bride? We've spoken about that now. Next is what is the order of wilaya? Maratibul awliya. What is the order? Who is considered to be given first position when it comes to being the legal guardian of the bride in a marriage contract. So it's not just, you know, it's not just a matter of choice. It's not just like, oh, the bride says, okay, I want my wali to be um, my best friend. It doesn't work like that. Uh, there, is a, there is a legislated and a, and a legally defined a method um, and an order which must be followed when it comes to who is her legal guardian when it comes to the marriage contract and he is the one the legal guardian he is the one that should be consulted and spoken to and you know should be referred to when it comes to asking a hand in marriage when it comes to speaking about the details of her mahar and etc it should be done through that wali okay um the first the first and in terms of the, the wisdom behind having a wali and you know what what are, what are the you know what is the point of it that again we can speak about it you know why not we can speak about it we're going to understand this concept on a very large scale. You know, we we can't uh, make a re- make a, a a a decision, or we can't say something about the concept of having legal guardian because of some because of what some guardians may do. I am familiar with, and we know there are some guardians who make it extremely difficult for their daughters to get married, or even have their opinion when it comes to marriage, and know that this is wrong. And this is not what Islam teaches. So they are in the wrong. Islam is not in the wrong for telling us to have a wali in a marriage contract. Okay, The awliya, if you like, or the guardians who make the their daughters' lives extremely difficult, those who add additional and ridiculous conditions, those who uh, want to sort of just drive their daughters towards one single person as their decision, all of this and not taking a choice into consideration, they are in the wrong, not Islam, for its uh, uh, prescription of having a wali. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful system you know, where the, the man goes up to the father. And we, have even, we have this in other cultures also, not to mention specifically, not because that's where the beauty comes from, but you know, it's to show that it's not a strange thing only to Islam. Um, uh, you know, the whole concept of the, the, the man, he wants to ask for the hand of the, the woman in marriage, so he, so he must go and he should go to the father if, if he is the wali, okay, and speak to him, 
man to man and agree, show that he is able to look after this bride, show that he's able to cater for her, to care for her, to provide for her. And that, uh, you know, Wali and the guardian has a responsibility of making the research and doing the due diligence to make sure that he is indeed able to, uh, you know, take care of this woman and support her. And again, look, we have these crazy ideas flying around nowadays. The moment we say take care of, someone is going to say, oh, I don't need taken care of. The man needs taken care of, just like the woman needs taken care of. Everyone needs taken care of, okay? We don't have to be so arrogant and say, oh, I don't need taken care of. And, you know, therefore, leave. no, we all are human beings. With the whole purpose of marriage is to find compassion, to find love, to find, you know, intimacy and to find care for one another. And so there's nothing wrong with us saying that taking care of and so on, you see. So don't, we don't need to get offended by that at all. One second, my light's just gone off. Okay, here we go. Right, as for the order, the order is the first person who has the legal guardianship in a marriage contract for the bride is her father, Al Ab. Okay, and uh, this is established, and this is we can say more or less agreed upon. Now, in the case of in the case of where the father is present of the bride, but the, the bride has been married before, and she has a son. She has a son who has met the conditions of being a legal guardian. So, understand the scenario, we know that firstly, that the legal guardian of the bride is her father. Suppose now, if the bride had been married before, and then she had a child, okay, and she had a child, uh, uh, and this child, as in this son, has now come to an age of bulugh and understanding and is a Muslim, and fulfills the conditions of guardianship, then who do we go to first in terms of, or who is the legal guardian? Is it her father or her son who is an age of understanding and has also met the conditions of being a legal guardian? This is a discussion between the fuqaha, but we can say that um, you know there is a sort of half and half split, uh, or maybe more on the first side that majority of the fuqaha are saying that the father still maintains the legal guardianship over a bride, regardless of whether she's been married before, has children or not, or whether it is the first time she's getting married. There is, of course, the other opinion which says that if the father is there, but also the bride's own own son is of an age of decision-making, aqil, you know, hur and mail and rushd and Muslim, then he also has a say, and in fact, he has a right to make a decision, or not make a decision, but to be technically her legal guardian. And they have both their, you know, evidences, but by and large, we can say that the stronger opinion is that the bride's first and foremost, uh, the most, the, the strongest right to being her legal guardian in her marriage contract is her own father. Second, when it comes to the, being the legal guardian of the bride, is her grandfather, al jaddu wa in ala. So if it's grand, if, if the dad is not there, for some reason, maybe he passed away, or maybe because he said, you know, he sort of nominated his, his, you know, the, the bride's grandfather, or because, you know, whatever reason, right? He's not, he's absent. So uh, he's absent and he has consented, or he's passed away, or whatever, right? Then after the father, the next person to have the rights of being legally, uh, the legal guardian is her, who? Her jad, her grandfather, and then, you know, the father of the grandfather, if he's a, if if the grandfather is not there, and so on. What in ala means, regardless of how high that, how high it goes, meaning if the father's not then the granddad, and if the granddad's not there, then his dad, and so on. Um, now, suppose now the father's not there. Suppose now the father's not there, the grandfather is there, okay, as her legal guardian, but she also has a brother. She also has a brother. Father's not there. Grandfather is there and she has a brother who is an age of understanding or, and fulfill, or I'll just say fulfills the conditions of being a legal guardian, okay, as in technical guardian in the, in the marriage contract. And I've said this so many times so that we're very clear on this, okay. Uh, we have a granddad and we have her brother who would be more priority to be the legal guardian in this marriage contract. ذهب أبو يوسف محمد ورواية لحنابلة أن الجد والأخ سواء سواء التقديم كما في الميراث. That according to the Imams Abu Yusuf and Muhammad from the 
the students of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi and an opinion in the Hanbali school of law that the grandfather and the brother are the same in terms of priority when it comes to brother, of course, fulfilling the conditions, both of them, then they are the same in terms of who becomes the technical guardian. وَذَهَبَ الْمَالِكِيَّةُ وَرِوَاتٌ أُخْرَ الْحَنَابِلَةِ أَنَ الْأَخْرِ يُقَدَّمُ عَلَى الْجَدْ There's a second opinion of the Maliki school of law and another opinion in the Hanbali school of law that the brother has more of a right to be the legal guardian than the grandfather if they are both well and healthy and around and fulfill the conditions of being the technical uh, guardian, uh, legal guardian. The third person in queue of being the legal guardian of the bride when in, a, in a marriage contract is al martabatu thalith al ibnu wa ibnuhu wa insafal. Suppose now father's not there, grandfather's not there, brother's not there, as in not there, not being like not being in the room, you know, as in they are not in existence, or they have stepped aside, or they have been absent for an extreme long amount of time whereby they're in the they, they are considered to be absent. Alright? Um, when we say grandfather, we say grandfather of the father's side. This is all talking about father's side, okay? So father, grandfather of the father's side. Okay, um, and then a brother of the father's side, we're talking about again. Okay, this is the order. Uh, then comes, so the 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 the, the, bro- the father's not there, uh, the grandfather's not there, the the she doesn't have a brother also. Uh, they're they're all absent. The fourth person we search for is um, uh, the f- uh, the f- the fourth person we search for. Is the son if she has a son? Does she have a son who's of a, who can who fulfills the condition of being a legal guardian? If she does, then that son or even grandson, okay, son or even grandson, mashallah, tabarakallah. If a sister is getting married at a sort of older age and she has a son who's who's an age of an understanding, uh, or even his son, as in a grandson, then that person can be the legal guardian um, in the marriage contract. Um, the fourth, if you like, the fourth person in the, uh, that was third, sorry. Fourth person is the brother, which is from both mom and dad and a, a half brother from just the dad. Just the dad, okay. Uh, he would be coming in fourth position in terms of being the legal guardian. So a brother is the brother is the fourth, uh, if it's for a, for a full brother or half brother. Okay, now we come to fifth, which is awladul ikhwa. Suppose now, you know, this bride, she doesn't have a father, she doesn't have a, a grandfather, she doesn't have a son, she doesn't have a brother, a full brother, or even a half brother. Then the fifth person we resort to, or fifth category we resort to, um, in terms of uh, legal guardians for the bride in the marriage contract are the, the sons of the brothers, her nephews. Her, and that's of course, look, her nephews was not the first, it was the fifth. So don't say nephews first and then skip all the, no. They have to be non-existent or in the hukum and the ruling of being non-existent for us to come to the fifth step. That's how the order goes. Who are her, her, her nephews from her brother, awladul ikhwa, the children of her brothers. And after this, you know, this is going to be a very rare case where a woman doesn't have any of these people. And then Sadisan al Mawla, and this is again related to uh, the, the whole uh, phenomenon of slavery. And then the sef- seventh person in Hukum is a Sultan, as in the Hakim, as in the, the Muslim legitimate ruler of that time. If someone has got no relatives, no nephews, no, you know, no nephews, no. No brother, no son, no no grandfather, no dad, and so on. Then the 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 representative of the government, the leg the, the, the legitimate Islamic government of that time, would be allowed to become the girls and the brides' uh, legal guardian. Uh, it's been quite a long time, and I don't want to make it any longer than it already is. There is some more discussion when it comes to. Uh, legal guardianship and inshallah perhaps we can pick up on that next time uh, inshallah we will pick up on that next time and uh, we have the hukum of إِذَا غَابَ الْوَلِي الْأَقْرَبِ فَهَلْ تَنْتَقِلُ إِلَى الْأَبْعَدِ أَمْ إِلَى السلطان. this is a masala you know if the wali is absent then does the 
Someone's asking what if they're divorced. That doesn't really matter. Divorce is a separate issue. Divorce has got no effect on the bride's guardianship. Her guardianship is independent of that. You know, her father is still her father and her mother is still her mother, even despite divorce and any disagreement between the parents. So for her to, see, for her to get married uh, uh, in terms of legal guardianship, this is the order regardless of the parent's marital status at that particular time. Um, inshallah, we'll pick up on this discussion next time. Barakallahu feekum, may Allah accept for all of us. Taqabullahu minu minkum, subhanakallahum, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu alayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.